Your life alone is already an example of the extreme beauty that God has for this life. This is where the fun begins. So recently I asked students what questions they had about God so that I could respond to them in a video format. That way I could spend a little bit more time on the topic, bring up some scriptures, things like that, a little bit more than what I could answer in a short conversation at church. So the question that I have today, why did God create sin and not just bring his creation into a perfect world? So I wanna to respond to that and I will begin by addressing the first half of the question, why did God create sin? Now, the main thing here is that God did not actually create sin itself, but rather gave man an opportunity to obey him or to disobey him. Because we have to think about God in the way that he is described in the Bible, in his word. He is described as the most perfect being, period. He's so perfect, he is so good, he is so loving because that's who he is, that's what he is. He is love. I love you. He is goodness. He was before time, he will be after time, and he is 100% good. And if he is 100% good, he can do no wrong. It is logically impossible for him to do evil things. Recently, we taught on Adam and Eve in the garden and how Adam and Eve had everything they could possibly want. However, so that they could choose to actually be with God or to choose not to be with God, God also placed the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden so that if they disobeyed, they would understand that they were now sinful and after sinning against the Lord would be kicked out of the garden. Now the question is, did God create the sin itself? Well, not really because it's sort of like how the color black is not really a color on its own, but rather it is the void of colors being absorbed into a material. So this color black is not black per se, but rather it is a void of colors. Whereas white is all of the colors being blended together and all reflecting at the same time. This is a major reason for why darkness and light are used so often within the Bible, especially when it comes to darkness not overbearing the light and how just a little bit of light can shine through the darkness. Because once again, darkness is not the light creating the darkness, but rather it is a lack of light within that space. In the same way, sin is not created by God. It is a lack of God in that person. It's a lack of God's spirit within them. And it is a lack of desire for God as well. Ultimately, Adam and Eve, they desired more than what they were given. And specifically, they wanted to be like God, knowing good and evil or discerning good and evil for themselves. The second part of the question was, why did he not just bring his creation into a perfect world? Well, he actually did. He brought Adam and Eve into the garden, which was perfect. And that was supposed to remain as their home as long as they obeyed the Lord. However, because of deceitfulness of the serpent and their desires to have more. I, I couldn't have enough. Uh... I'm going to have one more. They sinned against the Lord and were kicked out of the garden. Furthermore, there is a, another really huge piece to this entire question of why did God even allow Adam and Eve to have the opportunity to sin? And why couldn't they just live perfectly and be fruitful and multiply? And why couldn't we today enjoy that as it is? Well, ultimately... You and I would not be here today without the brokenness of this world, realistically. The Lord knows, and he knew before he created everything, every single choice that every single person would make, and before he created the universe, he said, yes, I'm going to create them in spite of all of those choices that they will make. 
I'm going to create Adam and Eve in spite of the choice that they will eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so that each one of these people that I am ordaining to be created and I will create myself will actually be born and they will live and they will either seek me or they will reject me. He ordained that from before time began. So you sitting there right now, me? if Adam and Eve had not sinned, you would not be here. I don't even get that. What? You would not be here to even think, why would God allow this? Your creation itself hinders on the fact that there is sin in the world. However, this also brings so much glory to God because you have the opportunity to choose him as well. You have been born. You have been brought into this beautiful creation because even though there's a lot of brokenness and sadness and pain and suffering and death, God still brings so much beauty into life. Your life alone is already an example of the extreme beauty that God has for this life. If I read Ephesians chapter 1, it may clear up a little bit about what I'm talking about here. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 starts as this. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he lavished on us in the beloved one. In him we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him, we also have received an inheritance because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will, so that we who had already put our hope in Christ might bring praise to his glory. In him you were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and when you believed. The Holy Spirit is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. Paul talks a lot about praising the glory of God because God is glorious. He is glorious. When I say glory, what I mean by that is that God is so intensely good and so intensely overwhelmingly good that even to look on his face would be incomprehensible because of how good he actually is and how powerful he is and how praiseworthy he is. And so in that, Paul is saying that we should praise his glory. We should praise him because of how incredible he is. The fact that he thought of you personally before the foundations of the world, before he created time, before he created space and matter and the world itself, and before he created Adam and Eve, he thought about each one of us right now. Every single person that walks on this earth or ever has walked or ever will walk on this earth. We were not by nature actually worthy to be children of God. And that might sound strange to you, but if we read Ephesians chapter 2 in a little bit, you'll understand what I mean by that as well. All of this is for his glory to be shown to us. He is worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the praise. He shows us that constantly throughout his creation. Because he loves us so much, he wants us to see how good he is. And so in the middle of our choices, our horrible choices that we make all the time against God, that's a terrible idea. He still shows us his glory and his goodness and his love so that we can continue to look at him with this awe-inspiring mentality about who he is. Paul also says that we've already received an inheritance because we were predestined according to his plan of the one who works out everything. We were also sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment of our inheritance of the, until the redemption of the possession, once again to the praise of his glory. Uh, we will get to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever with him 
in perfection with new bodies that have been glorified like Jesus. And this life that we live now, though painful and difficult and sorrowful, is very temporary. It's so temporary. That's why Ecclesiastes talks about the futility of life. It's so short. In a way, it's almost meaningless because of how short it really is. And the only thing that actually matters is your relationship with God, how you are with God. Like, are y'all are y'all okay? Or whether or not you are bought and sealed by the blood of Christ so that you can make it to eternity and that you can make it to heaven and have that glorified body and live in a new garden with the Lord. I'm going to quickly read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 9 as well. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, which all of us have been at one point, or are right now, in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, that is, the enemy, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and we were by nature children under wrath, as the others were also. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So once again, just like Adam and Eve, having walked in sin and disobedience, because they too were under the power of the air, the spirit, the enemy, the serpent, that was working in them at the time, they also were created out of this love, and God lavished his mercy over them. He gave them a prophecy that some, one of their heirs would eventually crush the serpent's head, which, of course, is Jesus dying on the cross so that he could defeat sin and death. That is the salvation by grace, through faith, because it's not from us. It's God's gift. God gave us a gift in the middle of our rebellion against him. He still had grace for us, and he loved us, and he gave his son for us so that we could once again, someday, get back to that garden and live in perfect harmony with the Lord our God. So just as a recap, God didn't necessarily create sin, per se, because it's more of a lack of God, but rather, God did allow for the opportunity for people to sin so that, number one, people could choose to love the Lord or to disobey him. Number two, so that all of the people that he has predestined to live would live. And number three, so that he could show his immeasurable riches and grace and mercy and glory to us in love. I hope this answers the questions. If you have any questions that you want to ask about God and you want a video response for it, go ahead and leave a comment down below. God bless you. Have a great day.